Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vashik and one of my favorite activities is to go through the websites and newsletters of my favorite galleries around the world to check what exhibitions uh, they have on. In this video I would like to tell you about four great exhibitions that are on display right now which I believe you should visit before they expire. But since many of those exhibitions are held in different museums, uh, in different countries and even in different continents, it is very difficult to attend all of them in a single season. For people like me who won't be able to attend all of them, I'll include references to different books, videos, podcasts, which will help us to enjoy the exhibition without uh, even attending it. I hope you'll enjoy this series of videos. The first exhibition that I would like to share with you is called The Making of Rodin and it focuses on the French sculptor Auguste Rodin who worked between the late 19th century and early 20th. He's often considered to be the father of modern uh, sculpture. I'm quite sure you have already seen some of the Rodin's works. For example, his sculptures such as The Thinker or The Kiss or The Gates of Hell can be seen uh, on the covers of books, on posters. All Although Rodin is famous for his bronze and marble sculptures, this exhibition focuses on his plaster work, which allows us to see um, through his creative process how he came up with those great um, sculptures that defined modern sculpture in general. I was always fascinated to see the sketches of someone like Michelangelo, Raphael or Leonardo to see how they gradually came up with their great paintings. And this exhibition is about the same creative process uh, of uh, Auguste Rodin. It allows us to see how he used plaster sculpture to came, come up with his great ideas. If you are too far from London or you won't have time to attend this exhibition, there are two um, books that I would like to recommend to you. The first book is the biography of uh, Rodin written by Ruth Butler. Uh, it's called Rodin, The Shape of Genius. Um, but there is one book that I cannot recommend you enough. If, whether you attended this exhibition or not, you should definitely um, read it. I have it here actually. It is Rainer Maria Rilke's book on Rodin, where Rilke, one of the greatest poets of the late 19th and early 20th century, writes about the creative process of Rodin. I think we are so lucky to have a work like this. One great artist talks about another. As I said, whether you attended this exhibition or not, um, please get this book. It is incredibly interesting. It's very short and it's uh, brilliantly written. The second exhibition that I would like to tell you about is held also here in London at the National Gallery. It's called Conversations with God, Jan Matejko's Copernicus. Jan Matejko is a Polish painter who is not as well known outside of his motherland. Although in his motherland in Poland he is considered to be a national treasure uh, along with Frederick Chopin and Copernicus himself. There is a great description of this exhibition by a Polish uh, historian Waldemar Januszak, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, where he describes the time when um, Jan Matejko was creating his masterpieces. Poland was partitioned between three empires, German, Austro-Hungarian and Russian. To preserve Polish identity, people had to rely on three sources, as Januszak mentions, and that is their language, Catholic Church, and art. And Jan Matejko was exactly that treasure that tried to preserve 
Polish identity through art. And one of his famous paintings is of a Polish astronomer, Nicolaus Copernicus, who was first to discover and have a proof that it, that it is the Earth that circles the Sun instead of the Sun circling around the Earth. And this painting is worth seeing with your own eyes. The experience is completely different and I think that's what makes exhibitions great. Mateiko illustrates the moment when Copernicus discovers this fact, this scientific fact. And it is as if the God and the majesty of the universe shocks him and surprises him. Um, if you won't be able to attend the exhibition, you can order this um, wonderful guide done by the National Gallery where the whole history and the whole um, leitmotif of the exhibition is, is described. It's a brilliant publication. So the second exhibition is Conversations with God, Jan Matejko's Copernicus. And while I could attend the previous two exhibitions, the next two that I'm going to tell you about um, are is going to be a bit difficult with them because they are quite far from home. The third exhibition that I would like to recommend is for the people who live in New York or nearby. It is held at the Met. It's called the Medici's Portraits and Politics between 1512 and 1570. I was always fascinated by the Medici's family, mainly because how much they supported great artists of their time, how much they facilitated the growth of Renaissance, of what we know as Renaissance today. This exhibition focuses on Cosimo de' Medici, perhaps one of the most known uh, members of the family after the Lorenzo the Magnificent. Cosimo used art in his propagandistic goals and these portraits that are exhibited at the Met are a display of, of that power, are a display of that propaganda and that power politics that was happening in Florence at that time. The Met has brilliant series of podcasts dedicated exactly about this exhibition, which I'm very thankful for because I cannot travel to New York anytime soon to attend this exhibition. That is actually held, I think, until, 30, uh, until the 11th of October. So if you live nearby, take your chance and attend that exhibition for me. Um, I'll leave all the links to the podcasts and to the special book that the Met has made for, for this exhibition, which you can check out if you, like me, cannot attend. so many reasons to buy a ticket and go to Paris. And one of the reasons for me is the exhibition that is held right now in Louvre, dedicated to two great artists of the Romantic period that I admire a lot. One is a painter and another one is a poet. The exhibition is called A Romantic Duel, Delacroix's fascination for the Jour by the Lord Byron. The Jour, I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. The Jour is a poem written by Byron set in Greece under the Turkish rule. And Delacroix was fascinated by the movement in art, which is often called Orientalism, and he was fascinated by Byron, who died while fighting for the Greek liberation from the Turkish rule. And this exhibition collects all of the Delacroix's works and sketches, and once again, it allows, as it was with the exhibition with Rodin, this exhibition allows us to see the, through the mind of Delacroix and how he created his masterpieces. I cannot recommend you enough to read Delacroix's diaries. I usually, I'm usually not a fan of diaries, of reading diaries of even like the greatest people because they often contain information that is not uh, as interesting and you have to skip through to find something that is worth focusing on. Eugène Delacroix's diaries are completely different. It is a beautifully written um, narrative of his own life. Every entry contains a glimpse into his mind that allows us to see his artistic development since he was 
18, you know, like 50 years of insight into the minds of one of the greatest artists of, of all time. These were the four exhibitions that I wanted to tell you about in this first edition of the videos. I hope you enjoy them. I hope you will be able to attend them. Please comment down below and mention your favorite galleries, what galleries you would like me to cover in these videos. Um, I would be very grateful if you could share the exhibitions that you are looking forward to attending i would be once again very grateful thank you very much for watching you can follow me on instagram you can subscribe to my newsletter i have a podcast where i interview artists and authors which also will be linked down below and i'll see you in the next video